We put some serious work in. And I go home every day, my head hits that pillow. Like I'm, I'm gone. And that 90 to 95% mental is built, that strength is built on the run up to the fight. You know what I mean? And it's built through discipline. There's no other way to build it than through discipline than making yourself get to the gym when you don't want to get to the gym. I've put corners, I've had shit performances, I've got my fucking ass whooped in front of my family. You know what I mean? Dad, brother, sister, friends, girlfriend. And he came up to me and he was like, look. It's more to last and fight. No, there's not. I thought, no, there's not. And that was the perfect, that was the best thing he could have said because I thought, I mean, the thing that's going to lose you the fight, the thing that's going to make you quit or fold or just not give as much as you should is that voice in your head. Yeah, it's our boxing. For me, it's just, uh, fuck, it's been, it's been a laugh. Do you know what I mean? Being able to do what I love every day, that is the best, that's the best success with my best mates, do you know what I mean? There's not a day that we come in and it feels like work, like never. My name's Charlie O'Neill and I'm from Leicester. I'd say uh, it's, Leicester's not a big place, do you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's, it's a small place. It was good. Uh, no like uh, crazy deprived childhood or anything like that, do you know what I mean? Very loving family. Um, all love boxing, all love fighting and stuff like that. Like the fights were always on the telly at the weekend. Growing up, always boisterousness at school. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's what sort of leads you towards the martial arts and, and training and stuff like that. There's always that. Probably like loads of young men now, especially with. Um, now, you, now, if there's a fight at a school, a big crazy fight at a school, you'll see it on the social media and stuff like that. Back in the day, it was just like the fear of it. You'd probably never even really see a fight at school, but you, you'd hear about, oh shit, there was a fight at lunchtime. You okay, know, that could be me tomorrow. I better make sure I'm ready. I, I bet that's everyone's first initial way of getting into martial arts. Surely it was mine anyway. Yeah, yeah, I remember the first time I went into a boxing gym, I was 12. Pretty sure it was Halloween. Pretty sure it was Halloween because the gym was dead and I'd been nagging my mum for ages. Oh, I want to try this gym, I want to try this gym. And then this kid at school, who was actually, he was like quite a, he was not a typical boxer. Do you know what I mean? He was the last kid you would expect in a boxing gym. I remember him telling me that he went there and thinking, well, if he's gone there, I'll be all right. You know what I mean? I'll survive, you know what I mean? And uh, I remember telling mum and dad, and my dad was like, you, you know, can you even do 10 push-ups? you do 10 push-ups here now? I remember do 10 push-ups on the living room floor, and I, I squeezed out the ninth rep, and I thought, fucking hell, and I did like 10 up. And that, that next day, because it was Halloween, the gym was quite dead. Like, there weren't really anyone there. There was one kid there who was decent, and he said, oh, do you want to do some sparring? No one was watching it. It, was, it weren't like a proper, proper gym. It was an amateur boxing gym, but it weren't like like loads of different coaches and this kid battered me just battered me but he was just touching me you know like just touching me he'd had a few farts he was just moving me around he was a bit older than me and uh my eyes were watering do you know what i mean nose streaming eyes were watering and but i weren't hurt and i remember thinking that at the time like you know you're all right do you know what i mean like d don't panic if you were scrapping when people were still smoking <laughs> and working men's clubs then you started from a young age yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But that was like my starter gym. And then after that, I had to go find a, a, a proper boxing gym. I went to Chris Pyatt's boxing gym. Chris Pyatt was like the only world, first world champion to come from Leicester. I got battered in there for years. You know what I mean? Because I was always kind of like the youngest lad. Obviously, you're not driving in, getting the bus. And getting on that bus when you know you're going to have a fuck, you're going to have an odd session, you're going to have an odd day, you're going to have an odd night. I, I can't even really remember. 
you know what, I, I was saying this to the lads the other day, now there's a lot of talk about mental health, anxiety and all these things and I never recognised that in myself but I would feel anxious on that bus every day. On the way there I'll get nervous on the way to training but I never would think of it as oh I'm anxious or I'm nervous or maybe I'll think I'm nervous but anxiety wasn't really a word then that was in my vocabulary or anyone, no one's really saying stuff like that. So it was just like well we, yeah, that, was, that would be how I would feel every day on the way to the gym, but I didn't care, do you know what I mean? I didn't think about it. You'd get there, you'd get smashed up, you'd go home, your mum would say I was training, yeah, yeah, it was good. You know, I, I wouldn't know the difference between a good session and a bad session. Some days I'd land more punches than others, that was a good day, do you know what I mean? One day maybe you'd make a kid's nose bleed, that was a really good day. Your nose would be bleeding as well, but you've got to be thoughtless and emotionless in the morning. Like you can't be waking up with any thoughts, any emotions because they will keep you in bed. They will press that snooze button. Do you know what I mean? And there's so many, you know what I mean? There's a million podcasts out there now telling you to get eight hours of sleep a day, telling you don't train too hard on this day, have an easy day. And yeah, that is true, but that's not going to help you when you're in them hard parts. Now, don't get me wrong, I've cut corners, I've had shit performances, I've got my fucking ass walked in front of my family, you know what I mean, dad, brother, sister, friends, girlfriend, I've had bad performances and I understand after, it's just altering, it's 90 to 95% mental and that 90 to 95% mental is built, that strength is built on the run up to the fight, I mean, and it's built through discipline, there's no other way to build it than through discipline and making yourself get to the gym when you don't want to get to the gym and the thing that's going to lose you the fight, the thing that's going to make you quit or fold or just not give as much as you should is that voice in your head that's trying to keep you safe at the end of the day. That's your body's reaction to, to adrenaline, to, to whatever else. It's trying to keep yourself, it's trying to get you out of there, it's trying to get you back to your warm bed where everything's safe. But you've got to fucking ignore that voice in the morning. When you're waking up in the morning, you've got to ignore that voice, you know what I mean? Because it's not going to help you. And the more disciplined I am, the more mental strength that I have. And all this work is so consistent that by the time I get to fight now, there's not a doubt in my mind that I'm ready to go. I mean, there's not a doubt in my mind. And I know that the only fucking battleground is up here, you know what I mean? It's in, it's in my mind, it's when I get in there, there's always going to be, I know how hard I train and how hard I work. And I'm still getting them feelings, what the fuck am I doing in the changing rooms? Everyone does, you're always going to. But if, you, if you've not put that work in and you've skipped out on them days that's what your brain that's what your brain and your body is everything's going to remember on the night I mean, for me anyway so I remember after one of my farts this was the only time I've ever been stopped got stopped with a cut on the head and I'm in the change rooms after and uh I was just gutted, you know what I mean, like crying in change rooms. Most fighters have been crying in change rooms at some point. You're not crying out of pain, do you know what I mean? You, you're either disappointed or, you know what I mean? You're just pissed off, do you know what I mean? Und underwhelmed with your performance, whatever it is. And I was just really pissed off with myself. And he came up to me and he was like, look, there's more to last than fighting. And I thought, fuck you. <laughs> I thought, no, there's not. I thought, no, there's not. And that was the perf That was the best thing he could have said because I thought, what, what the fuck are you going on about? Like, this is all I want to do. Like, and after that, that was, that was it. I, I was on it, do you know what I mean? I didn't care if no one was at the gym, I, I would be there, do you know what I mean? If, if it was early, I'd be there. Sprit stair sprints, bag work. No one saw pads, that's fine. I let the bag, I'll do this, I'll do that. That was the one time he actually wasn't trying to motivate me. He was just trying to, he was just, doing it from a caring place, do you know what I mean? You just thought, oh, you know, it's fucking hell. It's not that big a deal, like, it's not that deep. But to me it was, do you know what I mean? It's, and, um, mate, I've been there working on building sites for years, mm. boarding houses, building and turning up to them new build sites. Everyone looks the same, it's dreary. You know what I mean? I remember being on there, one of my last days on there. I didn't know it was one of my last days on there, but this bloke, me and my dad used to work with them, called them Doom and Gloom, these two blokes, because they were just like, every time you saw them, and I remember it's cold and it's wet and I was carrying a plasterboard and the plasterboard was so wet that it snapped on my head when I'm carrying it and I looked over and this, <laughs> and this bloke said to me, he says, get used to this, Charlie. 
you got another 30 years of this. And I thought, what that? No, I can't. No way. And I, I'll always remember that. And I, but I remember thinking, nah, I'm not, 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 not another 30 years of this. I can't. Just being able to do what I love every day, that is the best, that's the best success with my best mates, do you know what I mean? There's not a day that we come in and it feels like work, like never. It's always fucking hilarious every day, do you know what I mean? We have a laugh um, and we put some serious work in and I go home every day, my head hits that pillow and I'm gone. I'm knackered, I wish I could stay up longer and, and have a bit more laugh when I get home, but I'm done and I'm, I'm ready for the next day, you know what I mean? I think uh, my best achievement is just being able to turn a hobby into a time job. It's the same voice in your head that wants to keep you in bed in the morning. It's the same voice in your head that, you know what I mean, tells you to have a day off. It's that voice in your head that was telling me, you're meant to be doing something else, you're not meant to be doing this. But that for me became a loud nag. Get out of this, you know what I mean? Do something that you're passionate about, do something that you enjoy. Just gonna remember them days off that you like. Just gonna remember them times you press the snooze button and them days where you decided to stay in bed and not come. And it's going to remember how you beat yourself up all day about it. And then there you are in the changing room thinking, what the fuck am I doing? And 